Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I will show you six hacks on how to create better micro worlds. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and if you want to learn how to edit photos, you came to the right place. Before we get started, I have two new vlog episodes already out. One is called I might be in trouble, the other one maybe I should have waited with some surprising thoughts in there. Check them out. Let's get started with this tutorial. So the first hack I want to show you is probably the biggest one and that is using a software called Blender. It's completely free, it's a 3D software, but we are not going to create the world in 3D, just the basic cube as a setup so it has the right perspective. So download that install it onto your computer and when you open it up it already has this basic cube in here and this is exactly what we need. Now the next step is to go up here to add and select image and select background and then go to the folder where you have your image in there for your micro world that you want to use. Over here you can switch between the list view and these previews which might be a little bit more helpful. Select that and then you can see it's placed in here. So you want to scale that up, make everything a little bit bigger and move that maybe also over a little bit. You can do that over here with this um, location part. You can see that this moves it over a little bit and you want to put it right in the scale that you want to use it. You can uh, scroll with your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So this is also very helpful. And the next step we want to do is to manipulate this cube. So let's click on that cube and use our scale over here. You can see we can resize that any way we want. So let's go here with six on the X scale and six on the epsilon scale like so. So we have a nice cube, a nice um, square. And with the set axis, you can define how high should your micro world be. So this gives you complete freedom about whatever you want to create, whatever is necessary for your micro world, right? Okay, so after that we have created this, um, you can see that we don't see the picture in the background. So up here you have this little, these round worlds and one of them has a wireframe. So click on that and now we only have these orange lines, which is really helpful for us. So now we can move this down a little bit here. Let's go um, for location, set, move this down where we want to have this. And if you want to move your viewport up, hold the shift key and then click your mouse wheel and move everything up a little bit. You can see this also changes the perspective again, um, but that is no trouble for us because we can also rotate that cube in any way we want. So you have some more tools here on the left side you can use. One of them that's really cool for us is the rotate um, tool like this. Make sure you have your cube selected, not the image like this. And now with the blue ring, I can turn this in a circle, as you can see. So this is really, really helpful to decide what kind of cube, what kind of perspective do I want to have. Of course, you want to make sure that both sides of the cube are clearly visible. So in this case, one side is almost hidden. That is not good. So try to go like this or maybe like this, um, some kind of set up that is helpful for you. Another thing that I find really helpful is that you look out that the main feature is sticking out of the middle of your cube while the sides stay clear and flow into the edges of the cube because otherwise you have to deal with everything that is higher than the sides and cover that up and it might also cover up parts of your micro world so that might complicate everything a lot more. So try to Keep it so you can look into the world and have the edges not obstructed by any kind of object, right? That makes it a lot easier. If you have found your perfect setup for the cube, what I would suggest you do is you hide the background image. So here you can see it says empty and there's a little image icon and then you just click on the eye. This is hiding it and now the easy thing that I'm doing is simply make a screenshot of my screen. I use the print button for that on my computer. I go over to Affinity Photo and then Control V to paste it in here. And you can set the blend mode to lighten or to, yeah, lighten is good. Okay, let's pull this up to make it larger. Um, 
No, lighten is not good. Let's see, we need another blend mode. Yeah, let's go with screen. That's good enough. It's only so you see what is going on. You can see I already have almost created the same setup that I was using for my world. And the only reason why we need this is so when we place our world, when we place the different sides of the cube, we have a reference that makes it easy and makes it perspectively correct. In the 3D software is a really good way to do that and gives you a lot of freedom. Of course, if you learn a little bit more about Blender, you can also do other things. You can do cuts inside of that cube. For example, you could cut out in the front another cube so it's a negative space and you can look more into the world, what is happening in there or all kind of other things like a round world or other stuff. So you can get really, really creative with very little knowledge about how this 3D software is working. Okay, so this is the first advice that I want to give you and makes the world much, much more realistic. The second one is the way you create a realistic, believable world are the edges. Those are the most important parts. You see, this unevenness here is important for our eyes to understand that the surface is uneven. That is a major, major part to trick our brain into believing that even the small surface details are elevated and have a 3D feel to them, right? Okay, the next part is also very important and that is to add little details and personally my opinion is it is completely okay to go a little bit goofy with it to be a little bit playful with it because from my perspective this looks like a museum exhibit it looks like a toy world it is a small a life world but at the same time a playful thing that you basically imagine in your mind so to have these little details like this kind of smoke here where one comment said this is cigarette smoke you can't use it as cigar smoke i find it okay it's the wrong smoke for a volcano but it's the right smoke to make everything look a little bit more goofy it would also be nice to add a person here for example or other details this makes it even more alive that makes it even more interesting also, this sat down here that I have created with a grunge map, this is also nice to have that. Someone also suggested in the comments to have some of the lava flow down here. I was thinking about maybe creating some little lava pebbles, some glowing stones down here that lie on the ground. That would also be cool. So think about these little details. How can you bring the world alive and turn it into a little story? Because it makes the world itself a lot more believable. The next trick here, the next hack is the font down here. By the way, again, this is inspired by Benny Productions, so absolutely shout out to him. Really cool idea. Now, the importance about the text, you can see if I take the text away, it's just the world and it's kind of standing there a little bit naked, a little bit alone. The text, on the other hand, elevates all of the image, makes it more interesting, gives more importance and turns this into a little exhibit, which basically puts it on a pedestal. And in our brain, we feel like this is more worthy. This is more interesting. So adding this text is a really good idea, but you have to be careful how to do that. If you do it in a bad way, it will actually take away from the impression of the world. So how do you combine fonts? You can see here the way I did this, and this is basically a major rule is, if you have one font that is more playful, the other font has to be plain. This is really important. You can't use two playful fonts together. In most cases, that's not gonna look good. So in this case, you can see that I have a serif font, which means I have these little edges sticking out here. You can see at the L and at the C, at the A, there's all these kind of things sticking out. This is what's a serif. And then this one is sans serif, which means no serifs in there. So you can see that in the A, in the H, nothing is sticking out at the side. Everything is ending just um, at a cut off basically at a sharp cut off and so this one is more playful it's more dynamic and the other one down here is more static so they even each other out and to put this little line in between makes everything look even more sophisticated another thing that is important about these worlds is to use strong colors and strong contrast this is also why it was really important for me to make 
the lava here glowing give it this really hot and irradiating a shining orange that you really feel like when you touch it you burn your fingers that's important i did this uh, with uh, blend effects here so you can see over here when we look into my layers that i'm using color dodge to make this shiny effect i think in my other video i said i'm using screen but i'm not using screen here i'm using color dodge you can see how this makes everything brighter and shining and feeling hot also with the cutout of the lava stream down here you can see again this is color dodge without it it's a normal lava stream which is already interesting but you can see if i turn this on suddenly this glow makes everything alive and you can even feel a little bit how the lava is flowing down the side of the mini volcano so think about using more colors more contrast make everything a little bit more intense because the world already is tiny so it needs to be a little bit louder have a little bit more energy to shine and really stand out on its own Here's the last part, the last hack I want to tell you is how to create these shadows down here. That's actually very simple. Let's go down here to the rectangle tool and just draw out a rectangle like this. The shape and size isn't important right now. What's important is that we fill this with a gradient. And the important thing here, the really important thing here is when you create that gradient, you want it to go from black to black this is really important not from black to white but from black to black so every value in there from the left to the right is black and then we set one side opacity zero the importance of this is if you don't do this if you make one side white and the other side black that you have some gray values in here that will be brighter than the rest and so your shadow is not going from dark to brighter but from dark to a brighter gray and then suddenly to nothing and that doesn't really look good right okay so after we've set this up use your gradient tool and move the gradient so it's going into the right direction like this you can always readjust the gradient this is not a pixel layer the next thing you want to do is to right click on your rectangle and down here convert it to curves. The difference between a rectangle and curves is that in curves you can use the node tool over here. You can see here pen tool, node tool, use the node tool and you can then move the sides independently. This is really nice to be able to do that and now I can simply pull them down here and set them up any way I want at my edge. So I create the shadow that I'm needing for my image. So for example, like this, you can be playful, experiment what gives you the perfect shadow for your image. And then if you have done this, you can see right now, the gradient is not moving when I'm changing that. So I have to now go in here and readjust the gradient. So this is actually going the same way as my shadow is going. So I have the darker parts near the wall and then it's get it's getting intensely uh, lighter the further it is away from my shape another thing i'm doing is that i use the effect layer effect that is gaussian blur to give a little bit of blur to my shadow so that it is not a hard edge you can also play around with that but a softer shadow is often better to have because of course most shadows we see in real life are soft shadows, right? Okay, here is the second part of what you need to do. And that is, if you can see here, if we go a little bit closer, is that you use your brush and make an extra layer, pixel layer this time, and paint in here a darker streak. Take a, um, take a brush that is black and then set the hardness very low. In this case, it's 9%. You can play around with the hardness and also with the opacity of your brush. You can also afterwards adjust the opacity over here of your pixel layer. So there's a lot of ways to set this up. And then simply you want to um, and then simply you want to click here once. This is important. Click here once and then go to the other side. Hold your shift key and click a second time. And this then will create a straight line between these two points. And then you can also go up here again, hold the shift key and click a third time. And this again has created a stroke down here. So you can see now we have two strokes. One is going up here. One is going over here so that 
the shadow near to the edge is a little bit darker and makes it more believable that your object is actually sitting on the ground. So these shadow constructions are really important to make the world more 3D, more believable. Another part of that is that you want to also create another layer and use dodge and burn, which means you use a pixel layer, set it to soft light, and then again, you use a brush which goes to either dark or bright from the color. Everything that is above the middle point here is brightening it up and everything that is below is making it darker. So what you want to do is to make one side darker and the other side brighter. And this adds to the 3D look that this is actually in a 3D space. If you do all of these elements together, you have a much more believable micro world. I hope I could help you today. Thank you very much for watching and let me know in the comments if you have more questions about that. See you soon. Bye.